what are you seeing that you're worried about? What trends do you see that people are doing from a from a biohacking longevity standpoint that that have you concerned? Uh, either, yeah. uh, and I'll put this in two buckets. The, the higher bucket would be safety. Yeah. The second bucket would be predatory behavior around basically people getting you know having having their money wasted, even if the agents that are being sold are not necessarily harmful. Yeah, I, I think the first one I. I, I'm excited about gene therapy. Don't, don't get me wrong. I think it's interesting and it may really change the field going forward. I even kind of like folostatin, uh, but I'm... Folostatin as a protein. Yeah, yeah. But I think that those treatments are not very well proven yet and I would not do it. I, I asked the question, you, would I do it myself? You wouldn't spend $100,000 for folostatin gene therapy? I probably don't have to spend the money and I still haven't done it. <laughs> so, uh, I, I've done MSCs though, yeah, IV to try that. And I think, you know, stem cells, it, it's, a, it's a different question there. I think if you're repairing soft tissue damage or something like that and injecting them directly, it probably works. Um, for aging, I have no idea, but I think it's probably safe if you have a somebody that's a good practitioner that knows what they're doing. But I think there's a lot of, this is a problem with stem cells. You go places and you really don't know who you're working with and, you know, if they're really treating the cells correctly, if you're putting the right things in your system. And so there, there's a safety concern there based on the practitioner, I think. Um, and so those are things that concern me. I, 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 I haven't gotten totally on board with growth hormone yet. I mean, I think probably used correctly might be okay. The data is interesting. Are you aware of human data that uh, and I'm in your camp, by the way, which is, I actually had a bunch of friends over for dinner last night and this came up and yeah, I was sort of, uh, I said, look, I, I, I can't point to a study that tells you this is, this is a bad idea. Yeah. And I've never spoken to a person who takes a modest judicious dose yeah. of growth hormone who doesn't tell me they feel yeah, better. Yeah, I agree. So it's hard to believe <laughs> it's not making people feel better. Yeah. Um, I also have never seen data to suggest it initiates cancer. Yeah. But it seems very biologically plausible that if you have cancer, small amounts of cancer, yeah. your probability that this becomes clinically significant is higher in seems that camp. Seems like it. I yeah. agree. Um, again, I say that with no data. Yeah, me too. <laughs> uh, and so, yeah, my view has just been, despite my own interest in trying things, I, I, I've, I've left the growth hormone one off the list. Mm -hmm. um, is that an answerable question, do you think? Yeah, and I, I think we could do clinical studies on this, you know, and some are being done. How would we address small. the safety concern, small. right? Because yeah. you, you well, really need to be able to try to track people for quite a long this, period of time. That's the problem with the gene cancer therapy susceptible. and all of these things, right? We we don't know what the long term yeah. is. And, and I guess, you know, it's, it's a gray area. The, you know, the, this is a weird thing with these clinics, right? Because, you know, you, you, there's, I think, from what I read in your book, you're you're doing sort of validated stuff. Uh, you're 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 not really out there in the stratosphere doing crazy stuff that we don't know about. Some of that I, I would like to think I'm not, but I'll tell you, there are people who are very critical of my use of rapamycin in well, in patients for for geroprotective reasons. There are yeah. people who might think I'm crazy for giving people SGLT2 inhibitors who don't have diabetes. So yeah. so I think there's things that we do uh, not. Not for all of our patients, and I, I again, I fewer than ten percent of our patients take rapamycin yeah. because my view is unless you're willing to have a very lengthy discussion about the pros, the cons, yeah. the risks, the uncertainties, and I don't give people a, an answer that says, "Oh, this is this stuff's amazing." My answer yeah. is, I don't know. Yeah, uh, here's how I think about it probabilistically. Yeah. Uh, here are the trade-offs. Yeah, um, and. Again, after after you can tell I'm not a good salesman if only ten percent <laughs> of the patients are taking it. Look, I, I think that's perfectly reasonable. I, I, but there's there clinics doing some really out there stuff, yep. and and uh, the, how do we know the long term safety on it? We just yeah, I think I think if you're going to go do that stuff, you need to go in with your eyes open. You're you're taking a risk. I've just seen so many horror stories of people yeah. that have come back from parts of the, cause you can't do this. A lot of the stuff you can't even yeah. do in the United States. So they're coming back from South America or Mexico, places in Asia, having yeah. done folostatin therapy or other, um, sort of very questionable stem cell therapies. Yeah. And I mean, people that have had horrible infections, like literally yeah. just artifacts yeah, yeah. of the treatment. Yeah, Never again, mind. That's a practitioner problem with this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I, but you know, there's some great stuff happening too. I work with Burmungrat Hospital in Thailand and they've got a longevity clinic now and they're very grounded in good science. And so, you know, but the problem is if you're a um, consumer of, for these products, it's really hard to know. So how, how, someone listening to us who's saying, guys, can you give me, um, give me some rules of thumb, some heuristics for navigating mm -hmm. the never, uh, never ending landscape <laughs> of, of, uh, longevity hacks that keep, you know, showing up on my Instagram feed, my TikTok feed and yeah. at cocktail parties. Yeah. I mean, that could be new, that could be diet books, <laughs> not yeah. just going to clinics in the re around the world. And I think it's really difficult to sort that out. And, uh, because it's what I was going to say is it it's it's clinical practice and research at the same time. It's a very unique situation, right? And and uh, there aren't many examples of that that I know of that are really maybe some functional medicine is a little bit like that too. But it's uh, it's interesting and and I feel like it's better for scientists to engage with you know where it's possible to engage with these clinics and try to help them than it is to just let people do things. And, you know, and without, if you can provide oversight that's helpful, you should be doing it. And so that's kind of how I feel about it. But it's uh, a lot of, a lot of academics don't even want to work with these clinics at all too. So, and, and so I, I get c criticized for working with them sometimes. So it's, uh, it, it's, it's an interesting world right now. <laughs> I'm Peter Atia. This podcast relies exclusively on premium subscribers for support, which allows us to provide all our content without taking a single penny from advertisers. I believe this keeps my content honest, making it a trusted resource for listeners like you. As a premium member, you'll get immediate access to our entire back catalog of AMA episodes and all future AMA episodes. You'll get longevity-focused premium articles packed with actionable insights, You'll get unrivaled show notes for each and every episode of The Drive, every topic, every study, every resource from each episode carefully curated for you. You'll get quarterly podcast summaries where you'll learn my biggest personal takeaways from the previous 90 days of expert guest episodes and much more. This journey doesn't have to be navigated alone. We can take these steps towards a better, longer life together. Become a premium member today at peteratiamd.com forward slash subscribe to join me in a shared commitment to a healthier future.